I needed something that I thought they would appreciate. I'm just going to carve, I thought, I'll just carve a boy, a young boy, sitting with his teddy bear uh, in front of a TV, watching TV. He's got a, he's got a blanket over his head, as they, a lot of them do. I have an eight-year-old, and um, he's going to pose for it. That teddy bear to me looks like a dog now. I thought, well, I'll just have it, and he looks a little bit older, so I thought I'll just name it TV Watcher. And you can determine if it's a kid or a, a little bit older person. Um, whatever it turns out there, I've got a kind of a way out. Um, now, it's tough. To determine how deep these things go, you have to sneak up on it. You have to do a little bit and think, boy, now that goes back to a, about a quarter of an inch behind his eye there and stops. Well, I can go in there and do that, but you would cut off, if you cut off a blob here, the one like I, the one I did a minute ago, there was nothing there. This is just going to be folds and some cloth down through here, and I have them sketched on there. Now, as you see, when I start carving, your sketching goes. It's out there in the air somewhere. So you'd better determine how deep you're going to go, and then go part of the way, come back, and maybe sketch some, and find you some more points, and saying, no, it's got to go deeper. How deep? I'll look over here. I'll go back to here. Well, it might end up way back here. But you've got to do that and turn it around. All you do is pull it out of there. I, I believe that's the best idea I've had lately. You just turn it around. I've even got, even though his rear end is going to be over in here, I've got it drawn there. That All that comes off. All this will be carved off. And he'd be sitting on a cushion from one of the chairs upstairs. This is going to be the cushion. I'm going to put some uh, wrinkles and stuff in there. That's going to be a little bead that runs around the edge of that. I'll show you here. Well, let me clean these a little bit. Uh, I, I, my grandson stops here. We get him off the bus. And he's in third grade this year. So I said, Weldon, you're going to pose for me today. And I said, now, I want you to pose with your bear. You bear I had you bring over the other day. And you take the bear. And we're going to get outside and put you on our outdoor table here. And I'm going to get a ladder out of the basement so I can get a, a shot of you from over your head. So I want to see the whole shape. So uh, I said, now, Weldon, you've got to be still about things. You can't move around. And he said that he wouldn't, but he's eight years old. And he got up on there, and I had him to get on this cushion here. So there's Weldon. And he's posing, and he has this blanket over his head, and he and the bear are watching TV. Now, I said, Weldon, you've got to be real, real still. I'm going to take pictures around you. I've got like 27 pictures here in this film, and I'm going to take them from different angles around you, which I did. But I would look down and... Weldon was scratching his nose, and he said, something itches. Well, look what he did. He scratched his nose. He probably picked up that hand, and I drew it there. I <laughs> sketched it. But he's picked up his hand and scratched his nose, and look what happened. <laughs> he changed. He changed hands. <laughs> I think that's funny. I didn't say anything about it, but it, of course, he. One of these days, he'll look back and at that and laugh. 
Hey, changed positions. <laughs> And he did a lot. He'd look to the right or something, and he would slump. And he'd do whatever a eight-year-old does. But anyway, I've got so many pictures, and it's going to be a composite of all of them anyway. I may use the 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 uh, uh, wrinkles on this side. I may use the wrinkles on this from uh, from one of the others. I don't know that that's going to end up being a bear. I kind of like the idea of his dog doing that. He has a dog that looks something similar to that. So I may put his dog in there. But I'm willing to change at any time. It's just that, boy, when you get to here, you've got to determine, is the bear closer to me or is he back in there? And how far back is he under the nose? If he is, and there's the end of the nose, you've got that much to carve out to move that him back. You're considering that at all times. It's like driving down the highway. You don't know what's going to happen to you in the next two or three minutes. There may be a deer jump out in, in the road. Your minds are going to, uh, a mile a minute, but you'll get so you can move you can it's kind of like going through heavy traffic that's that your let your mind do that for you help you saying no 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 and being you've got to be your own critic no don't take that off of there now just wait don't get in a rush you're telling yourself that it's still going to be hard and just a mountain of work here this i've just gotten started on fact is i think i've i've uh I would say that I've carved on it about 12 hours now. And there's many, many more hours to go. But I think that's good. And I, one of these days, that uh, that welding will look back at these pictures. Of course, I'll save them. And tell him how his first, first job at posing went. And showing. <laughs> I still think that's funny. Switching hands after you scratch your nose. Um, well, that's where I am. And, um, uh, of course, I've got other other things. I've got old, all, all kinds of old hand saws and stuff and chisels uh, the, through the years that I've used. Um, and I use that stuff on occasion. But I just went over here and decided to buy me some some stuff that I've been wanting uh, all my life, I guess. Uh, and now and I could afford it, I just went over and bought some. I bought a bunch of stuff here. It cost $325, and uh, I think it's money well spent. Uh, and this won't be the last thing I carve because i got a basement full. The other half of this basement is logs I've been saving uh, over there, they're bricked up against the wall. I've been saving them for like 50 years. There's some of them that are like that big around. There's walnut and cedar and stuff. I have plenty to carve now that uh, nothing better to do. Um, so um, uh, you can, I can carve here for hours. I could carve here unless my wife. Uh, comes and, and says it's time to eat, I wouldn't even think about eating or drinking or anything while I'm carving. It's just hours go by. Um, and I know some of you all uh, have developed patience like that, but you you have to have patience above all, I'd say. It's, and the fur if you're a beginner and you carve off the wrong thing, Either turn the thing around there and say, well, I'll just try me something else. I've got this thing back here. There's nothing on it. It's been cut out with a bandsaw. I'll do me something else. I'll carve a, carve a cat curled up there asleep. Well, I first thing I'd go and probably take pictures of some cats. And I might want to do a cat there. I'd try it. Don't guess, get disheartened. It's, after all, just a hunk of wood. That's not that valuable. 
uh, of course you hope that you can make it into something valuable but uh, don't give up be gritty uh, hang in there it doesn't matter what happens I've already uh, wore a blister by put, trying no screws put no screws down in there I'll show you how I hadn't been doing anything for a while and that wore a blister right there now that thing right here did it <laughs> it's in the palm of my hand putting these screws down in there it kind of twisted the skin loose but um, don't be afraid of hard work which I know you won't be and um, maybe send me something I'll send you all pictures of what I'm doing how about you all sending something let me see what you do and if you hadn't tried wood carving jump in there and if you've tried it and quit it for a while jump back in there 